guys. So I have an unboxing. It's been rough getting to this point. Uh, I first started filming it. My address was all over the place. So we, we got this fire. And we're just moving on. All right. So this package today is from Goulet Pins. And I will just get right into it. The... The kicker, the main reason why I placed my order at Goulet Pens, I, I've had some of these inks in my cart for a while now, but the the reason I actually pushed the button on it is because I would like to, I'm at a point in my fountain pen journey where I want to do some nib tuning, and Goulet has a nib tuning kit, which includes this which is just like a magnifier and all these tools for starting to try out tuning nibs. Now, I don't know anything about it. I just know that I have lots of pens and the main reason I keep buying new pens or wanting to try new pens is because I am interested in the nib experience and I haven't quite found the perfect nibs. Now I have done a tiny little bit of experimenting with nibs because I have a platinum parallel and I love this pen and there's a lot of modifications you can do so the only thing that I did is I took some sandpaper and I ground down one of these sides so that now I have the standard line weight and then a bolder line weight and then the boldest for filling in dark spaces. So. This is my whole experience. I found a really good blog explaining what you can do. So, and the first thing that they recommend is this kit. I can't think of the name of the blog right now, but when I write the description for this video, I will put it in the com or I'll put it down in the description for this video. So, if you guys want to check it out, you can. But they they spell out all this stuff, which you can buy individually, and Goulet Pen sells it all together in a package. So. I am going to attempt to take some of my pens that are less satisfying and uh, get the nibs somewhat closer to where I want them. I have a whole bag. These are the ones that I really like. And I have a whole bag of cheap, cheap, cheap fountain pens that I can experiment on that I just basically use for, you know, experimenting. So, I, uh, I, I've said this before, but I... I, I usually try to get the free shipping. I usually try to wait to place my order until I can get the free shipping from anywhere that I buy online. And most of these inks, uh, Goulet Pens has a fantastic feature where they sell these two milliliter ink samples. Most of these had already been in my cart, but they were not even close to filling it. And then this nib tuning kit is another $30 or something. And I had a little bit of extra room in my cart to get some goodies. I'll fill it up with some goodies. Um, you know, if it's if it's like thirty dollars or something, but if it's sixty to a hundred dollars, then I don't. Actually, I think Goulet is only you only have to do eighty eighty five to get free shipping. So I I think there should be a there should be some sort of Itemized list of costs. How much everything cost here? Let me see. Okay, I found my receipt. And it doesn't have any prices on it. I can't tell you guys about the prices. You'll just have to see what it costs. Okay, so. Ink samples. This was like $25 or $30. These are only about $2.50 each. We'll look at those. This, they always send just a cute little candy. I can't eat them because I have a lot of food allergies, but I will give this to somebody to enjoy. And then the rest of these are goodies. I think these two, these two belong to, yeah, micro mesh and mylar paper. Those two belong to the nib tuning kit, so I'm just going to put those there. I have my ink samples, which I will definitely swatch out as soon as I can. And then these are my goodies. So. This is the Apica notebook. I got it in light blue. I have never tried this paper before and I got it 
just to experiment with. It's supposed to be very fountain, print, fountain pen friendly paper. Usually I'll get a blank notebook or a dot notebook, but, um, and blank is definitely my top choice, but I didn't see them and I really wanted to, I've been wanting to try this paper for a long time, so I got that. Maybe we will even swatch the inks in here, actually. And then I got two pens. They are very cheap pens. Um, only a couple of dollars each. This Platinum Preppy, which um, I got it in the black. I got it in the, it says 03. And then I got a Platinum Prefound, Prefound pen. I love this color. This emerald green color is gorgeous. So I, these are both um, platinum. I like the platinum brand. I have uh, used the platinum desk pen and I thought that the nib was just fantastic on that pen. I've been kind of missing it. I got rid of it because the line was too fine for me and I just wasn't reaching for it. But uh, the feedback and the nib were just fantastic and you know if I don't like them at all then they can be part of the experimentation process so that's everything I got here today and I think that I'm just gonna sit down and swatch out all of these inks now this collection is mainly focused on Sailor Ink Studio I had ordered their sample pack of grays from the same website, Goulet Pens, and it came with two different Sailor inks, which was the 123 and the 224. And I just fell in love with these. I didn't even know about dual shading inks or multi-chromatic inks at the time, sorry. And this was my intro. So I had decided I was gonna buy, next time I got samples that I was gonna get, more of each of these to one more sample of each of these so these have been in my cart since I received my first order and I am so excited to have these back um, and then I really loved the multi shading thing and so I ordered a bunch more from Sailor okay so I got two each of these I'll just set those aside um, so I got a bunch more, and hopefully these will be gorgeous. Another, the other one that I really fell in love with from my original order was I got all the colors I didn't have from the Day at Tormentas document line. I use waterproof inks in my art all the time, and the Day at Tormentas line is my favorite, and so I got every color that I didn't have. I ended up loving the fog gray, so I ordered myself two more samples of those. I'll swatch one of them for you guys. And then the weird thing about this, I got De Atramentis Document Cyan because I had ordered a full bottle of this from another company and it's weird. I'll show you. Oops. Okay, it's weird. Um, on any paper, it behaves extremely poorly and it bleeds through the page and it makes a weird effect. So this is Midori. I have swatched all these inks on here and nothing bleeds through the paper and then you get this. So I wasn't sure if it was a real ink. Oh, and the other thing about that bottle too is it's labeled as document turquoise. Let me see if I can find it here and I'll show you guys. I actually put this sticker on it after I got my last sample set. Oh my gosh. Well, anyway, it said document turquoise, okay? So, I'm not sure if this is the one that I ordered in my last sample set or not, but anyway, I just wanted to get another sample so I could compare it and see if it actually turns out like that again, uh, because since my bottle was mislabeled and since it behaves weirdly. I wasn't sure if I got, if I maybe got a bad 
or a knockoff batch of it, and so I just wanted to see if this was going to turn out the same. So uh, that's a little experiment uh, that we'll do today as well. And then these are all my little sailor babies. So I have it's kind of hard to get them to stay down. One, two, three, which I've already seen. Two, two, four, I think is the other one. Yes. So I have two of those. Set one of those aside. And two, two, three. So all of these are likely to be multi-chromatic inks. And actually, I normally swatch all of my inks in this uh, MD paper. This is the Mindori notebook. I love this paper, and I just love their aesthetic. I like the unfinished and the covers, and this notebook really appeals to me. So I swatch all my inks in here. And then, um, so I think actually I'll test them out on this paper but I'm gonna swatch them on this paper at the same time as well because I just want to have them in my normal book and then we'll just use this first page as a test and so let me grab a sheet of lined paper because you can see through this paper it's thin enough that you can see through it so I will put that there and you can just um, I'll have the lines and then on this one already has lines so we're gonna use that all right so when I swatch out my stuff you may have seen another video of mine where I swatch inks but I like to use this line uh, this knife to make a larger swatch to see what it's like in full effect especially with these multi shading I'll show you what these sailor inks look like so they're just kind of an enigma because look at that but then when I wrote out with them initially, it was completely gray, and that one was a little purplish, and then I came back and I wrote with the same exact ink again, and they were totally different. This one looks light blue, and this one looks gray blue. And so I was just playing around. I'll, I'll be interested to see how these samples end up looking, but I like to use this little knife to make the bigger ones and then I like to use a dip pen to make the writing sample and today I think I'm going to use my actual actual dip pen and my brow snib which I might have to put back together Just slides on there to hold a little more ink. Hopefully I can get this to work. Okay. Is it? It is. Okay, so there's my tools. Actually, is this gonna fit in the ink bottle? I think that it will. Okay, so that's what I'm going to use. I'll get myself a fresh paper towel so that I can clean them off. They're very easy to clean. That is why I use them. So then we can just go ahead and get started. Get back to my fresh page here and I'll just do them at the same time so I don't have to reopen everything. And we'll start with this stinky little document cyan. Now every single other day at Trementa's ink performs perfectly and these are my absolute favorite. And then look at that. It's disgusting. I just don't understand what's different about this cyan ink. But it doesn't... It, it performs more like an alcohol-based ink or something. And it doesn't sit on the paper the same as other fountain pen inks that I've tried. Look at that. And I'm not sure why. I've never actually inked up a fountain pen with it, and partly because I thought my sample might, or my bottle might be defective, but now that it looks like that's just how the ink is, I will have to put it in a pen and see. Well, I mean, the dip pen gives you somewhat of an effect and somewhat of an impression of what it will be like in a fountain pen and it's just not nice 
and I have no idea why this ink is different than the rest of them, but I think I'll just stay away from it. Maybe in five years or so, I'll try again. And in case it's just the formula. Because originally what I was, the reason I got a full bottle of Document Cyan is because of these inks you can actually mix together. And so I got the CMYK. I mean, I already had the black. I've been using the black. I have gone through maybe, I don't know, 10 bottles of the black. But I was thinking I could mix my own colors. I'm not even going to put that in a mix. But I did get in my last order as well, the turquoise sample, and I liked the turquoise, so that could maybe act as the green, especially because, or the, you know, green maker, especially because I have blue, that, plenty of blues that I love uh, from the same line, so I went in the wrong order. I should have dipped the knife first, but I'll just write this out, and then we can put the knife sample And I was super impressed with this color. The fog gray is just such a nice blue. And so nice for drawing. And my main drawing ink now is, it's, it's a mix that I made. It's very close to the Dea Trementis dark blue ink. Um, but mine is a little more black. I use the dark blue ink and the black ink to make my own custom mix. I want, I sketched with black ink for a long, 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 long time and I kind of, I want black ink, but all of the black inks that I tried, basically when I close my book, they rub off onto the next page and I hate that. So I had to mix my own because I found out that the blue and basically any color of ink, they don't do the same thing. I think it might be like the carbon content of the of the ink or something. But I even ran tests. I thought, I actually bought all these fountain pen papers originally, this book included, to try and test out these this black ink smudging issue. Because I thought maybe fountain print pen friendly paper would be smooth enough to not cause that problem. And so I also got... This is the reason I got the samples in the first place is because I needed this waterproof sampler so that I could test all that. And you know what? They all do it. I couldn't find a black ink. Look at the, here's my test page. And they all s s transfer. I tried going online and doing research. I even went on um, Fountain Pens Reddit to ask everybody. And I really, I just don't know if there is a waterproof black that doesn't do this, but I like to use them in sketchbooks and so that's ruining a lot of my stuff and I um, I did the same tests with all the colors and so I ended up doing I ended up with some sort of black blue mix that now I sketch with and it hasn't been doing it in any of my sketchbooks and so it looks a lot like this that's what I end up sketching with now um, and the <laughs> that was a long tangent but the day Tremendous fog gray really goes well with the color that I like to use and I actually kind of don't like it how it looks on this paper right now and I'm not sure I like this to me doesn't look good at all but this looks amazing very shady um let me, I'm a, I don't like how this looks so I'm gonna come back over here and see how my sample looked on this page a lot more impressive I mean I used the same exact method so I'm not sure what's going on but it's even better than that one okay I'm gonna re-swatch this real quick all right we'll see how that dries now in the meantime Let's do some of these pretty babies because I already know this is going to be super fun and exciting. I forgot what these look like. I'm not that familiar with the different numbers. They're, it makes it hard to, you know, it's just a number, so it makes it hard to remember, like, what color. Obviously, I know the two that I've tried before. 
actually I'll just put these at the top because I know they're gonna go good next to the blues and then we can get into the other ones so this one is sailor two two no one two three knife is really not wanting to pick up anything right now and normally it's so fine look at that they're so shady and uh, multicolor -y. I don't even think I got the same kind of effect on my I don't know and they're different between the two different papers which I've definitely uh, read a lot more about these since first discovering them and even the pen and the paper can change the way that these look. And even with two different pens on the same paper, they might look differently. So you can get a lot of different, they're just kind of chameleon inks, I think is what people have nicknamed them. Because they behave so differently based on what materials you're using them in and with. And what nib versus what paper. And so on this paper, it looks purple. This paper, it looks more pink even. But we'll see how they dry. They're both coming out with multi-shade colors in the larger swatches, which is what why I love them. And so that's very satisfying. All right. And then we can do Sailor Ink Studio 224 see what that one looks like now already this looks so blue teal color compared to the last sample that I got I'm gonna shake it up just to make sure that I'm getting but like what I'm looking in the bottle here it's just so teal and last time I got the same sample it looked very purple green just like that one so I'm these inks are confusing to me I know that they both have purple and green in them, but last time they were a lot more blue, and this time I'm getting a teal one and a purple one, so. I mean, and last time I did the same paper. It's just, it's kind of confusing to me, but I got them not necessarily for their consistency, but just for their surprising effects and the fun of this type of ink. So it kind of fits into that. But it is very confusing because I am not sure why they look so different. And that one, the purple as it dries is even like a glowing kind of a purple. This is much more gray. So... That would have made sense that it, you know, kind of came in that initial pack, but it's just, it didn't, it looked a lot bluer in the, even in the container last time, so. All right, I know this one's going to be orangey, so we'll leave that one at the bottom. Let's see what I can see. This one's kind of a brownish color. I can't tell on these three, so we'll just, we'll do the browns at the end and then we'll just do these three next. Sailor 223, I actually remember that one because I couldn't remember which one I got last time. Oh, and maybe that's why. Maybe it was 223, and duh, I have the page here with the label on it, so I can just look back and see. It was 224. So look how purple that is here. And that one's green. Okay, so I had it right, but when I was looking up what kind of inks I might want to get, I saw this one. It, it's, it's pretty much a darkish, purplish color, and I remember it because I was trying to figure out, you know, which one I got before, and so I was looking pretty deeply into this one, and I think I could really love this color. It's... 
it's it's almost exactly like those two except a much darker version which will probably be gorgeous in a sketch let's see what it's like to write with Yeah, I really like this one. All right. That's nice. Okay, so we have four more here. Let's do 252. And I know with shimmer inks and I don't think shading inks, but I know with shimmer inks you actually have to shake up the bottle to get the right effect. I don't think it's the same thing with with these kind of multi multi shaders. I think you can just get, you know, the same ink without shaking it. At least that was my experience with my previous two bottles. So this one is 252. And that's actually a very gorgeous dull pink color in writing. Coming out with a little bit of green in the larger swatch. And also like a little maybe dark brown. That one is just gorgeous color. Look at them. And all together, I think they're so gorgeous. <laughs> like, that is a color set I would use. Not that one, but these are just so appealing all together. A nice muted palette that I would love to sketch in. Okay, so we have 373 here. Again, a very neutral color. I did go through these on Mountain of Ink. She has a gorgeous blob with a lot of swatches. And I made sure that the ones I was getting were multi-shaders because that's what I was interested in for this order. And also just that I would like the colors. I do gravitate towards neutrals most of the time. And this one is a soft brown that separates very slightly into like a pinkish yellowish color. More on this paper than this paper, but even without the color separation, it has very nice shading. It looks like it's going to have very nice shading as it dries here. Okay. Now we'll go with these two. This one is 273. Get the knife. Oh, that's so pretty. It smells bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. It it has a weird smell to it. This this color. <laughs> None of the other ones did, but it smells kind of, I don't know, just like manufacturing. Ugh. Not a good smell though. Or like doctor's utensils. It must just be the, um, I know they put an anti-mold agent in there, and it does. It smells like the sterile 
like sterile gauze you would get in a first aid kit or something like that so I bet that smell is from whatever anti molding agent they put in there okay and then we're on our last one and I don't know how these samples really work but maybe we just got the part of the bottle with all the moldy stuff in there anti-mold stuff I should just put that one in a drawer for 10 years and see if it <laughs> no I won't do that because I want to use it because it's cute this is the brightest one I got. It still looked from the swatches like it wasn't going to be too, too bright. I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of a pastel color. I just don't want it to look fluorescent. I want it to be light. And I was hoping that this would be that. And since it was also a dual shader with the pinks and the yellows coming out, I thought I might really enjoy that. My pen is just a little... Oh, and just in case you guys are wondering, this is the Browse nib, and it's in the 1.0 millimeter size. So it's still pretty, it's pretty fat and bold for a, a writing line, um, but for a drawing line, it's the thinnest one that they have. They, they make all the way up to, I think, 5 millimeter calligraphy nibs, and this is just the finest one that they have. I like to draw and sketch with this one. All right. So there's some gorgeous multi-shading inks for you guys. Uh, nothing comes through on the Midori MD paper, except for that cyan, which I just don't know what's going on with that. And a tiny bit comes through on the Abpika paper, which I didn't find this one as satisfying. This MD paper, it all just kind of floats on the surface. I was hoping this would be more like that, but it sinks a lot more into the paper. You can tell even as you're making the swatch itself and in the final finish of how it looks, it's just not as satisfying I don't know how to describe it but it does so show some shading um, I don't think it shows the color separation as good as this Midori paper but again this Midori paper is like cream colored instead of perfectly white and so it changes the colors a little bit as well I was hoping to I still haven't found a white version of this paper that satisfies me as much as the Midori MD so it's still going to be my go-to. We'll find something to use this notebook for. But for now, I think I've done a great job getting some of those. And I will give you guys an up-close picture. Let's get the camera down off the stand. And show you some... That's the Midori MD paper, and then this is the Apica So there you go. Alright guys, thanks for unboxing this with me, and I'll see you in the next video.